We crave to understand how the world works. But not everything on earth is easy to see, easy to know. On land, life is relatively simple to observe. We can walk nearly everywhere, look nearly everywhere. We can sit down and watch what happens next. Sometimes we can understand why. With the ocean, we encounter a whole new planet with all new rules. There is no easy way to study the teeming creatures that live beneath the surface of the sea. The oceans are 71% of the planet's surface. They have an average depth of 12,000 feet. In the ocean, there are lots of places to hide, in the dark, in all directions, even for a creature as large as a whale. Luckily, just like in the woods, there are sometimes trails to follow, places we expect the whales to be in the currents. Predators like trails. Each year, bowhead whales migrate through the coldest oceans in the northern hemisphere. They stay entirely in Arctic and subarctic waters. They spend their days under the ice. An average bowhead whale weighs about 50 tons, the weight of 500 people, and feeds on tiny animals the size of grains of rice. With prey this small, bowheads need to eat massive numbers of them. They need to seek out the places where this food gathers in vast numbers. Looking keeps the whales on the move. Even though it is difficult to observe bowhead whales during much of the year, we know a great deal about them. They are a well-studied species, important to the ocean food web and to native people throughout the Arctic for their own subsistence. A bowhead is a stocky dark-colored whale that lacks a dorsal fin. The biggest can grow up to 66 feet in length and weigh up to 100 tons. Their maximum weight is second only to that of the blue whale, the largest animal on Earth or in water. Despite their size, the bowhead is social and non-aggressive, retreating under the ice when threatened by humans or other predators. Transient orcas or killer whales are known to attack large baleen whales and bowheads are no exception. We know much today about bowheads because they have been harvested for centuries by indigenous people and by commercial whalers. Inupiaq whalers have known for thousands of years when and where bowhead whales pass by their shores in spring and fall. The locations of coastal villages are exactly where the bowheads come close to land on their spring migration. A cooperative project that began in 2006 works with native whalers to put satellite transmitter tags on bowhead whales so their movements can be tracked wherever they go. Because of the tagging project, we also know more about where in the Bering Sea bowhead whales winter how quickly they leave the Bering Sea in the spring, and where they stop during their fall migration. 
We also know about them as individual beings. No two whales are the same. As the whales navigate through the ice-filled Arctic waters, they accumulate scars. Scientists used these marks to identify individual whales. Aerial photography is used to identify whales, estimate the number of whales in the population, determine how long individuals stay in a given area, and estimate their body length. The aerial survey team observes bowhead whale behavior, documenting whales feeding, socializing, and traveling. Roughly one-third of the length of a bowhead whale is its head. The massive, bony skull allows the whales to break through sea ice so that the whales can surface to breathe. Native hunters have reported whales surfacing through ice two feet thick in some cases and routinely breaking ice a foot or less thick. Though they can break through thick ice, there is often no need. Their blowholes are perched on top of their heads, and they can breathe even with only a small opening in the ice. Bowhead movements seem to take advantage of the ocean currents and open water leads where the ice pulls apart. These currents and leads are the highways of the seas. In April, the bowheads start following the currents north toward Barrow, and then east through the heavy ice of the Beaufort Sea. They appear to be aiming for Amundsen Gulf to begin feeding on the abundant copper pots that are homegrown there in summer. Inupiaq hunters have watched the whales pass by Point Barrow for thousands of years. Farther south, for hundreds of years, the Siberian Yupik people have observed two whale migrations that pass by St. Lawrence Island. The Kialraq migration brings whales southeast from the ocean to just by the northwestern village of Gamble. The Buwalak migration runs along the island's western coast and out to Russian Chukotka. Tagging and aerial surveys have confirmed much of what hunters already know. In-person observations coupled with these tools allow researchers to learn about how movements vary between years and how often bowheads come in contact with industrial activities. The whales travel similar routes year after year, and while some whales turn left and others turn right as they pass by the Diamond Islands, they are all looking for food, huge quantities of food. These are massive animals and the ocean is cold. To stay warm, they must eat. Most predators eat food smaller than themselves, but these whales eat animals that are much, much, much smaller. Animals called krill or euphausids are less than an inch long and are related to shrimp. One species of krill has a worldwide biomass of 500 billion tons per year, twice that of Earth's human population. Krill are found in both southern and northern oceans. Some hatch each spring in the Bering Sea and are brought to Alaska's northern coast by the ocean currents arriving at Barrow in the fall as juveniles and adults, just in time for migrating bowheads. Bowhead whales also feed on copepods, 
animals even smaller than the krill. Copepods are the most abundant multicellular animals on the planet, and the whales consume them by the millions. A bowhead whale skims through the ocean with its mouth open, scooping both water and food. Then the water is forced back out of the mouth through the baleen strainer, and the whale brushes the remaining food back into its throat with its huge tongue. Even though they can skim large volumes of water for prey, the whales need their food to be concentrated to feed effectively. Scientists study ocean currents to learn how krill might be carried from their spawning grounds in the Bering Sea northward, as far as the Beaufort Sea. By simulating the movements of current riding krill that spawn in April near Alaska, we see that some krill arrive at Barrow in time for bowhead whales to feed on the adults during September and October. Other krill can be found in the western Beaufort Sea. Bowhead whales are counted in the spring as they pass by Barrow, Alaska. Not all the whales can be seen by observers. Some whales pass by at night, or in fog, under the ice, or far from shore. But many can be counted while swimming past in open water leads. Hydrophones in the water listen for whale calls to help count the whales that pass unseen. Accurate counts are important to show that the bowhead population is healthy and increasing, able to support a subsistence harvest and not being negatively affected by industrial activities. The Inupiaq and St. Lawrence Island Yupik people have harvested whales for thousands of years. In 1946, National and international entities began to regulate the harvest. In Alaska, the U.S. government and the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission have jointly managed the traditional subsistence harvest of the bowhead whale since 1981. A number of strikes are provided to Russia, and the quota determined by the International Whaling Commission is allocated among 11 villages in Alaska that hunt whales. Gamble, Sivunga, Whales, Little Daimi, Kivalina, Point Hope, Point Lay, Wainwright, Barrow, Nuwaksut, and Kaktovik. The lives of the Yupik and Inupiaq peoples of western and northern Alaska are heavily dependent on the subsistence harvest of marine mammals, land mammals, fish, and migratory birds. The whales, in search of food, are widespread across the Chukchi and Beaufort Seas. Some whales travel back and forth across the Beaufort Sea. Some go farther north. Most go east towards the Canadian Beaufort Sea and Canadian Arctic. Food here is plentiful in spring, summer, and fall and the bowheads take advantage of the abundance. As luck would have it, krill and copepods are a high-calorie, high-fat food. It is clear that the whales put on much more fat than they need to stay warm. These fat reserves may be important for winter survival. The stomach of a 30-foot bowhead whale can hold more than 25 gallons of food. 
a full stomach of the poet holds so much food, the energy equivalent would be 4,500 chocolates and even more for larger whales. When feeding is good, poets can fill their stomachs up to five times in a day. More than 22,000 chocolate kisses in a day. As might be expected, the whales put on weight. Whales begin to reproduce at about 25 years old. Pregnancy lasts 13 to 14 months and calves may be born every three to four years. At birth, a calf weighs around one ton and is about 13 feet long. Calves nurse for six to nine months. By the time a calf is a year old, it can weigh 12 tons and measure 30 feet long. That's a growth rate of four inches and 400 pounds per week. In the southeastern Beaufort Sea, near Amundsen Gulf, where the Mackenzie River flows into the Beaufort, vast expanses of algae grow during the long summer days amid these nutrient-rich waters. Great swarms of copepods feed on the algae and in turn feed thousands of bowhead whales. The whales spend the summer months in the southeast Beaufort Sea, where they can typically find lots of copepods year after year. They do not eat constantly, but they do take advantage of opportunities when they arise. A bowhead whale tagged northeast of Barrow is searching for food in the cool water near the sea floor. The tag tells us the whale's depth and the ship measures the water temperature. Short-term tagging is a common way to study whale feeding behavior. A tag is attached to a whale for periods of a few hours while scientists follow the whale's movements and sample the ocean many times along the whale's path to measure temperature, salinity, and the amount of food available to the whale. Once detached from the whale, the tag can be recovered and dive information recorded by the tag can be analyzed. Before bowhead whales were commercially hunted for oil and baleen, their worldwide population was an estimated 50,000 individuals. Commercial hunting lasted more than four centuries since the current worldwide bowhead population has recovered somewhat and is now estimated to be 30,000 individuals, 16,000 of whom live in the Bering, Chukchi, and Beaufort Seas. Most bowheads travel close to the Alaska shore in the Beaufort Sea, then fan out as they turn south through the Chukchi Sea along the Russian coastline where food is also plentiful. Often on the move, the whales travel from one seasonal feeding area to another. Bowhead whales communicate with each other in order to navigate through icy Arctic waters and find food. Scientists use hydrophones to record these sounds. A spectrogram is a picture of sound showing time, frequency, and loudness. Such an image is a visual way for scientists to understand the complexity of bowhead and other animal communication. Listen, and we can hear bowhead whales, bearded seals, and walruses. Bowhead whales can live for a very long time. 
Indirect evidence comes from stone weapons that have been found in the blubber of whales recently harvested by hunters. Native whaling crews generally stopped using stone weapons by the 1880s. Scientists have estimated the age of bowhead whales by measuring chemical changes within the lens of the whale's eye. These changes occur at known rates. The oldest whale aged using this method was over 200 years old. The bowhead may be the longest lived mammal on earth. During the last days of autumn, the whales travel south. As the bowheads migrate from feeding areas through the region of the Bering Strait, they most likely face their greatest threat of orca predation. While scientists have not witnessed attacks, coastal native peoples in Chukotka and St. Lawrence Island have observations confirming fatal attacks. Young animals are the most susceptible as scars are usually seen on larger adult survivors. The bowheads spend the winter in the Bering Sea, wandering and calling to each other. Over the years, a few bowheads have been seen in open water polynias and along the ice edge, implying that these are important wintering areas. Satellite data has now shown that bowheads winter in the western and central Bering Sea in heavy ice with little use of the open water areas or ice edge. People are terrestrial animals. When bowheads slip beneath the ice and the water, they leave our world and enter theirs. At the threshold, we wait for them to resurface, wondering about their lives far away from human eyes. Spring, summer, fall, winter, spring. On the move year after year, perhaps for hundreds of years. Hunter's observation, satellite telemetry, aerial survey. Just a glimpse into the elusive light and the year of the remarkable bowhead whale.